Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome yet again to another episode of Dinner Guide. My name is Chef Andy and today I have something very interesting for you all. We're going to be making a very very simple dish, a very very simple dessert as well that definitely will commemorate that particular beautiful Valentine's feeling you and your loved ones may be looking for this season. And for that I have a very beautiful dish for that and we'll be making a chocolate lava cake. So without further ado, I'll start by introducing some of my ingredients. So from the front, I've got some beautiful dark chocolate. I've also got just a little bit of all-purpose flour. I've also got some two eggs here. And in the small bowl, I have two split egg yolks. I also have one cup of sugar there. I also have a bit of butter. And last but not least, some vanilla essence. So we're going to slide into a short break now. If you're going to be taking any notes, this is your chance to grab your pens and papers. And when we do come back, we're going to dive right into this dish. So don't touch that dial. We'll be right back. Welcome back ladies and gentlemen. If you're just catching up with us, we're going to be making a very simple dish today. I'll be showing you how to make a chocolate lava cake. And for that, there's a few things you will actually need for this dish, which is basically this one of a kind uh, oven proof ramekins. Now this, are, this is basically what I'll be baking the cake in, so I'll be able to show you something as we continue. But for now, I'm going to start with the first process, which is basically melting your chocolate. So you will need some very, very few items for that. Of course, a knife to chop your chocolate with. You'll also need a double boiler, which is basically just a bit of water in a pot that is hot. And you'll also need a bowl, maybe ceramic, uh, glass or stainless steel that you can actually be able to put right over your pot. And this should actually help you temper your chocolate very simply. Now, just to refer back to the tempering, tempering basically means melting your chocolate really slowly but without really burning it or changing its, uh, its, its texture or its taste. So we are going to start off with the chocolate and I'm just going to start off by chopping up some of the dark chocolate on the board. So I'm just going to chop this really roughly. So I'm going to be using about 300 grams of dark chocolate for this recipe. And all you need to do at this stage is just start by cutting up your chocolate. Uh, particularly for this recipe, I'm using dark chocolate, which is particularly a very, very good option for making your desserts. But if you are thinking or if you are curious to find out what best chocolate works for your desserts, I would say there's some very good chocolate in your regular retail stores. And if you can't be able to find that, there is also an option which is cooking chocolate and it basically uh, will temper a little better than uh, regular chocolate. But I will also remind you, please don't try and substitute lunch bars for this particular chocolate because it won't give you the same texture or uh, characteristic for the fact that this is very, very high in butter content. And if you're going to substitute this for any chocolate or candy for that matter, it may not be able to melt. And what you'll end up with is a very, very stagnant mixture. So I'm just going to finish off chopping up the dark chocolate. I'm just going to scrap as much as I can off the board. And now all you're left to do now is just to melt your chocolate. So very, very simple technique. Uh, have a pot of water going with almost very, very little water. It shouldn't actually go higher than about half this, uh, half your index finger. And all you're left to do now is just place your bowl on top and just allow the chocolate to melt gradually. But remember, it will actually need a bit of your input. So I particularly like to use a spoon or a wooden spoon. And all you need to do now is start, just mix it around in the bowl. 
Remember what happens particularly with chocolate, it does need a bit of that spreading of the surface area that will actually aid it in melting really quickly and it also avoids you from burning your chocolate. So as you can see I've got a, a very very low flame going and my water in there is just steaming hot but not touching the bottom of the bowl. Remember that's also another pointer to make sure as the moment the water touches the bottom of your bowl it starts to boil the chocolate and it won't melt it will actually start to get very brittle so always make sure to have a bit of space in between and as well also to pick a bowl that will actually cover a bit of space right over the top of the pan which will also aid you in melting really quickly and avoid burning your fingertips so we're just going to keep mixing that and basically what you want to do is you want to keep mixing and stirring just until the point where you can't see any more of those uh, brittle pieces of chocolate and what you're left with is a very very molten consistency so this should actually take you not longer than two to three minutes and i'm also also going to recommend as well um, some of you may actually want to melt your chocolate in the microwave. There are techniques to doing that and if you are going to be using that process instead of the one we're using today, I would insist do actually do some research on that. Find out how best to do it and also it's also always handy to actually read the contents at the back of your packaging. It will actually give you a lot of pointers on how to work with your chocolate. So I'm just going to keep mixing that. And be sure to also just turn your bowl around occasionally. All right, so once you get to the stage where you can't actually see those chocolate lumps anymore and it's now starting to get to its molten stage, you can actually turn off the heat now and just continue to mix through. And the reason for that is basically to actually control the temperature of your water. So this basically ensures that your water stays hot, but it doesn't continue boiling and uh, and you also limit the chances of getting it too hot and burning your chocolate. So nice, beautiful. So you should actually be able to just pour that chocolate off your spoon like that. And as I said, two to three minutes should be just about enough time. So I'm just going to take that out of the pot. We can reserve the water. Now next up, you're just basically going to start combining your zabayon, which is basically your eggs and your sugar. So very, very simply, start off by cracking your eggs into a fresh bowl. So I'm going to be using two whole eggs, and I'm also going to be incorporating two egg yolks. So basically the reason for that is uh, a molten chocolate is quite rich and what you're looking for is quite a very, very velvety kind of feel to your cake. And that is basically achieved by using just a little more uh, egg, egg yolk than you would to, egg, uh, uh, to whole egg content. So very simply, start off by whisking your eggs. And to that, we're going to be incorporating a bit of some vanilla extract or vanilla essence. And last but not least, some sugar. So I'm going to be working with a whole cup of sugar. Right, now your zabayon is done. One last thing you definitely will need your pot for at this particular stage. Uh, you could actually reheat it slightly and all you're going to do now is incorporate your butter into the chocolate. And I particularly always insist if you're going to be, if you're going to try and melt the butter, always try and see if it'll actually mix before you put it back on the heat. This is just to make sure that you don't heat your chocolate at, to a very, very high temperature. And the moment you actually start to, to watch it turn into a lump, you can actually just put it back over your water bath and just proceed to mix. And you will actually start to notice the butter will start to melt itself right into the chocolate, giving you a very, very beautiful ganache mixture. So we 
we're just going to continue mixing that for maybe another half a minute. Right, so as I mentioned, always lift your spoon just to be able to tell if they still have any lumps in there. And if you still do, just continue running your spoon continuously around the pot. Now this is just about done. Now just to make sure that doesn't get too hot, we're just going to leave it out on the side there and just allow it a few seconds just to cool off. But just to help it to cool off a little faster, I always insist just use your spoon to continue mixing. This basically allows for the chocolate to cool a little faster. And it is actually very crucial to, uh, to make sure your chocolate is not too hot. Remember, you are going to be incorporating it into your eggs. And what happens is when your chocolate is too hot, it will actually scramble your eggs. And what you'll end up with is not the same ganache mixture you're looking for. Right, so that's about ready. Just going to leave that on the side. And now, just to get back to our Zabayon mixture, just whip that, make sure it's got a nice, beautiful, thick consistency to it. And all you're left to do now is just pour your chocolate really slowly. And continue to incorporate. One particular reason for pouring it slowly is just to make sure that you don't pour in too much at once and actually start to cook your eggs. Right, so I'm just going to hold my bowl continuously right over the bowl. This is just to help the rest of the mixture to pour out, but you can actually also grab a spoon and just try and get that last bit of chocolate out of your bowl. All right. Just going to rinse my hands quickly. Right, so you have that particular stage done now. You've got your chocolate nicely mixed up and you can be able to see it's got a nice, beautiful molten running effect to it. Now remember, this is going to go directly into your oven and one particular thing you need to remember with molten cake, it will actually cook for a very short time at very high heat. And the reason for this is to make sure we get that beautiful cakey layer on the top and still also manage to have a bit of malt and chocolate on the inside. So for that, it's why we're actually adding a very, very little amount of flour. So in here, I've got six tablespoons of flour. And I'm just going to add slowly as I continue to mix. And now basically what your flour is doing at the moment, your flour will actually help to give your your uh, lava cake mixture a bit of uh, a bit of texture and this will actually be able to get you to be able to get that elevation and that cakey effect so all you need to do is continue mixing through until you don't have any more specks of flour in your bowl And be sure to continue mixing for at least two to three minutes. This is just to make sure you get a totally even mixture. And now your molten cake mixture is done. Now one particular thing I could mention at this stage, um, you can actually be able to make the mixture as we did on the show today. And you can actually pour this out into your ramekins and keep them in the fridge until the time you want to bake them. So you can actually be able to make this mixture way in advance. Just pour it into your ramekins and just basically give it a bit of time in the fridge. You can actually take those out, throw them straight into the oven. They will still give you a very beautiful molten cake. Now we're going to now move this into the oven. And for that, we will also actually be using something else that I'm going to mention. And basically that would be the double boiler method as well. So this particularly entails us to actually pour our mixture into the ramekins and then place the ramekins into another container with water. And basically the reason for that is to allow only temperature to go right into the bowl 
And second of all, also helps you to protect your ball and, allow, and avoids it from hitting too quickly and cracking and breaking, thus ruining your whole, uh, your whole dish. So I'm just going to grab baking tray underneath here. And now all you need to do now, remember we've got some beautiful ramekins here. They've just been greased with some, uh, some, some butter on the inside. So a nice generous greasing. And all you're left to do now is pour your mixture into the bowls. And as you can see, it's a very nice and runny mixture. Very, very molten. And that's exactly the texture you're looking for. So just hold your bowl and allow those strings to disappear and do the same to the other container. And that is about done. So you can actually reserve the mixture and bake this a little later. You could actually bake or add some more containers to your, to your, to your list and you can actually continue to bake. But at this stage, we're basically going to go into the double boiler method. So I'm just going to grab some water. And now all you need to do is transfer your ramekins into your baking dish of choice and just add a bit of water on the inside. So be sure to always cover it at least halfway. And that should be perfect. Now one particular reason for always not or for not pouring too much liquid in there for starters is it actually makes it impossible or very difficult to move your container into the oven. So I always insist if you are going to pour some water and you're not very stable in moving this from the table or from your countertop into the oven, always pour just a little bit in there and proceed to add a little more just before you continue to bake. Now to this end I've got a preheated oven. I'm just going to calibrate that to 200 degrees. I'm working with both the top and the bottom element and I'm now going to set my timer for about 15 to 16 minutes. And all we are going to do now is slide our molten cake inside. And now we're basically just going to leave that baking and we're gonna give that a few minutes. Now when that's done, I'm going to take them out. We're going to put, an, put them on the counter and I'm going to be able to show you what exactly a molten lava cake looks like. But before we do so, we're going to slide into a break and refresh. And when we do come back, you'll be, you're going to be able to see what our molten cake looks like. So please don't touch that dial. We'll be right back. Welcome back ladies and gentlemen. For those of you who are just joining us, we were working on a beautiful molten cake and we're just about to take it out of the oven. So I'm just going to quickly grab that. All right, now those are done now. You can actually be able to see they're nice and puffy over the top. But remember, it's always very important that you take very much precaution, especially working with hot dishes. So always just grab a towel. I always insist just grab a towel around your fingers like that. And this actually helps you to just pick those out of the water bath really easily. And I'll just do the same for the other side. And that is done. Now we can just discard the water. But something also to remember, always take a lot of precaution, especially when dealing with hot uh, items or out of the oven. You can actually burn yourself really, really badly. So always be very sure to have at least a cloth to do that or at least some beautiful uh, oven gloves to actually be able, so for you to be able to do that. Now, all that's left now is to plate our beautiful molten cake. So I've got this one piece here, but I'm just going to show you with one of the pieces. So I'm first of all just going to 
quickly just loosen that from the sides of the bowl. Alright, and now I'm just going to use my hand here and all I'm left to do now is just grab a plate and just cover it over the top of your ramekin and just turn that around. And once that's on the plate, you should actually be able to just lift that off really easily. And as you can be able to see, the moltenness just runs off the plate and that's exactly what you're looking for. Just as I'd mentioned earlier, it's one of the many, many desserts that can actually be done really, really simply. But as you can see, you actually get the idea of the cake and the molten sauce that comes with it. And this would just be served as is. But because I have some beautiful uh, ganache decorations here, I'm just going to use a few of those to just finish off the dessert. So I'm just going to press those onto the side like that. And as you can see, it just starts to melt really, really quickly. I'm just going to do the same with that piece. And I'm just going to leave those there. And what you have now, ladies and gentlemen, is a simple, simple to make molten cake. I hope you've managed to actually pick something off the show today. And I hope you're all feeling motivated about trying to make your own molten chocolate cake at home. I've definitely done my part in showing you how it's done. And I hope you're definitely going to try and do so yourselves. So from the studios and myself, a very, very, very warm thank you from us. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching the show today. I also recommend that you check out our Facebook page. A lot of content in there to see. We also have some YouTube links. There's plenty, plenty, plenty of items to be able to see there. But from the studios and myself, thank you so much for being with us today. And until the next episode, have a lovely evening and see you soon.